Hi, it's Liz Nedden. Let's have a look at describing a trend pattern and identifying a trend pattern when we're doing a time series investigation at level one. So the trend line is the, is the pattern that goes through the middle of the data. So we're looking to see what kind of pattern that forms, whether it goes up, down, sideways, um, or so on. So it's always thinking about where the middle of the data is, because we know that sometimes if I think about um, certain types of data, so I think about, for example, umbrellas, I know that selling umbrellas tend to be more higher at the middle of the year when it's winter and it's raining a lot more often. And so we expect that those times of year are going to be higher and we expect that other times are going to be lower. So we're looking for where the average in the middle is. So the trend pattern can be one of these three main types. And we look at the overall pattern, okay? So we can look at whether it's increasing, going upwards, whether it's stable, or whether it's decreasing and going downwards. So that's the main patterns we want to identify. We also need to identify the start and end coordinates. Now those are the start and end coordinates of the trend line, okay? So not the original data, and I'll go over that again in a bit. So we've got our smooth trend line. So you can see the black line in the background. That's your data. So we are interested in the smooth line. So when we look at the values, we're looking at the values of that number. So we want to know what the overall is. And so I want to look from the start to the end. Has it gone up? Has it gone down? Is it pretty stable? So there's two methods that we can use to draw the trend line. One of them is by hand and one of them is using NZ Grapher. And I'll, show, I'll go through both methods because often it's quite useful to be able to start by drawing by hand so it builds your understanding of what the trend line actually is. So here is an example. So this is looking at the car sales per month and this is for a year's worth of data. And what I'm going to do is I've drawn a line there that pretty much kind of hits the top points. So it's a kind of line hitting all those peaks. And I want to draw another line that hits the troughs or hits the bottom values. So I'm kind of like summarizing the pattern of that data. And then my trend line is going to be the line that goes through the middle of that. So that's what we're looking for is we're looking for the trend line that's the middle of that. So that's my trend line. And I want to know, OK, what's the value at the start? Now notice the value of that green trend line. It starts around about 19 cars, 18, 19, 20, well, about 19 or 20. The actual data value, the black line, it starts at 16. But that's not the value we're going to use to describe the trend. We want to use the green trend values. So the end trend value is about 34 cars. So those are the values we're now going to use to describe what the trend is doing. So here's an example. So we can talk about the trend being our average, because that's what it is. It's talking about the average over a period of time. So the average number of cars sold, because that's what my, my numeric variable is, is increasing. It's going upwards. And it's going from an average of 19 cars sold per month in January to an average of 34 cars sold per month in December. So notice I'm doing the coordinate, the value, and the month for the start and end points. Let's have a look at an example now using NZ Grapher. So what we've got here is we've got this trend line that goes through the middle. OK, so NZ Grapher draws that for us. And I've just kind of highlighted where it is. And at the ends of those lines, we've got the start value. And so that's your average. 9.71 is the average. And then at the other end is your average end point. So those are the values that I want to use when I'm describing that trend pattern through the middle. And I need to think, well, where does the data start from? When does the data finish? And I've got to use those coordinate points as well. So this is what I put together. So I say we can see that the average amount of sea ice in the Arctic, because that's what this, this data set's about, um, that has decreased from an average of 9.71 million square kilometres of sea ice, surface area of it, in January of 1993, so that's the corner of the first data point, um, to around 
8.93 million square kilometres of sea ice by December of 2022. So that's what we want to do for our trend line is the overall pattern and include the start and end points of that pattern. Thanks for watching.